I have with me Dr. Jörg Hahn, who is the System Engineering Manager in the European Space Agency's program for satellite navigation, Galileo. Galileo is, of course, named after the famous Italian astronomer and mathematician of the 17th century. Dr. Jörg Hahn, um, we are here today looking at existing and new navigation systems that are literally changing the way transportation systems work and the way we find our way around the world. Now, what exactly is the navigation system that you're working on? Thank you, first of all, for being here in this uh, BIPM uh, ITU workshop. We appreciate very much that, uh, as Galileo, our position uh, is uh, of interest uh, to the community, and uh, we are happy here to contribute to establishing a good position for that uh, decision on leap seconds. Secondly, uh, we are building uh, the European component to the so-called GNSS, which is the Global Navigation Satellite System, which is uh, basically a system contributing, contributed by many uh, different systems like GPS, GLONASS, GPS of the US and GLONASS of the Russian Federation, Baidu of the Chinese. And uh, Galileo is basically the European contribution to that. It is an autonomous system um, built up under full civilian control. Uh, this system will be uh, fully interoperable with uh, the US system GPS, which many of us know today, and uh, the GLONASS system of the Russian Federation. Our system will um, provide from the outset uh, dual frequency uh, signals to the public, and this allows from the beginning for uh, meter level accuracy, which is much better than what we have uh, today. In uh, addition, uh, this uh, system which will consist of uh, 30 satellites in the end, by the way, 27 operational satellites and uh, three active uh, spare satellites. Uh, this system will uh, provide global services uh, for all uh, communities interested. This system is not just the uh, space segment. It contains also a ground segment, which is distributed worldwide with uh, sensor stations gathering data and uh, collected and sent to our tool uh, control centers we have in Europe, in uh, Italy, in Fucino, and in Oberpfaffenhofen, in uh, Germany. Uh, to send uh, these data, we use a redundant network, communication network, and in order then to communicate with our satellites, we use uplink stations to control the satellites and to provide uh, mission uh, navigation data. At ITU, we've been discussing the future of the international time scale. Mm -hmm. Now, does the um, Galileo system work on a different time scale from UTC or is it on based on UTC? Okay, the uh, Galileo uh, system works with an internal time scale. Uh, this is quite similar to what uh, GPS does. GPS time is quite known to many people in the science community and uh, engineers. So our time scale is called Galileo system time, GST. So this is an internal time scale. It's a continuous time scale, which uh, is steered to UTC, modulo one second. So that means uh, it does not have leap seconds as such. It's really a continuous time scale, but uh, the information on leap seconds is uh, made available uh, to the users. Universal time is coordinated with the with an addition of the leap second. Mm -hmm. Now there's a proposal to eliminate this leap second. Yes. What is your opinion on that? Okay, we have uh, carefully, of course, investigated uh, this situation. We are, fo as Galileo, we are also following. Uh, the, the discussions since uh, many years. Yeah. So myself, even I was involved uh, uh, some, some years ago in a, in a workshop in London, for instance. Uh, the situation indeed is um, uh, our internal uh, operations uh, run with system time of Galileo, GST. So everything internally is time-tacked to GST. Uh, the operator uses uh, GST, but I must say also for operations scheduling, uh, the operator, operator for convenience is using also UTC. You see this a lot in the, in the displays. Yeah? So scheduling, planning aspects are done in UTC. Since our system cannot run in full isolation of the world, we need also external connections to communities, as I said. So we have this time service provider. The files we get, they are tagged in UTC. We have also a link to the geodesy uh, community, International Earth Rotation Service, Geodesy, uh, and they're also time tagged in UTC. As such, we are impacted indeed if there's a leap second coming. And this uh, creates quite uh, an inconvenience. I have to Wha say. What happens? What okay. happens when you put in the leap second? I have to say this the system is designed to cope with leap seconds. But what you have to do, you have to change configurations on the elements. 
you have to check for the proper implementation, you have even to test it, and in the end it's always an operational hazard. Yeah? So if you look at the operators, they don't like that yeah, today. And uh, our position, coming then back uh, to the original question, indeed to uh, facilitate the operations and to increase the robustness of our Galileo system, we would be in favor, in principle, to abandon uh, the leap seconds. We have also to say, of course, there is a famous parameter under discussion, the DUT1 parameter, uh, and this parameter would grow eventually uh, above the one second uh, range today, and this would uh, cause some, uh, let's say, uh, changes we have to do on our interfaces to the external world, for instance, to cope with this kind of uh, offset. And uh, so to ensure that the operations will continue smoothly. Having said so, we have to change uh, interfaces uh, in our system. Uh, we are also considering, once such a decision would be taken, uh, to uh, consider the provision of this DUT1 uh, parameter through Galileo. So we look forward to having Galileo working fully and we look forward to using it as users uh, in, a normal, in our normal day-to-day -day functioning. Thank you very much, Dr. Han, for coming with us okay. to ITU. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.